so friends we will start with different types of networks now as we have uh, saw previously with uh, what is the uh, network basically consists of now we will see what are the different types of network so let first come across LAN which is basically the local area network not network uh, it's basically a network that connects a relatively small number of machines in a relatively close geographical area now what does that mean basically two or more computers or networking devices connected in a room of row or building or a campus are said to be connected in a LAN basically this is normal LAN which we can set up in a home or a room office or a small area now what are the characteristics of LAN the characteristics of LAN is basically high bandwidth usage because in LAN we not only share the data because uh, data we share emotions so example if you want to transfer files from one folder to another in the, uh, the size of the file is basically more than 1 GB so if we if the machines are connected over a LAN the data transfer is very easy the second point arises who is the owner of the LAN basically the owner of the LAN is the owner of the campus or the office or the room who is the owner of the room or the campus or the office is the owner of the LAN so the responsibility of the owner is basically to provide a quality of service which is required for the LAN to work properly that is voice, video and data this is three triple play services which is required so that LAN network functions properly now there are different types of topology which are used in LAN there are ring topology, star topology and bus topology what is a ring topology? it's a configuration that connect all nodes basically nodes as we have seen in previous slides is a host or the uh, computers or the machines uh, in a closed loop on which messages travels in one direction the star topology is a centered around one a configuration that centers around one node to which all others are connected and through which all messages are sent it's something like star as the name suggests the bus topologies are basically all nodes connected to a single communication line that carries message in both directions at the direction uh, now these are the diagrams from which you can get a gist of what, uh, what are different topology now what is the technology which is used to communicate over the LAN now the technology which we which uh, normally is used is Ethernet Ethernet is the technology uh, which is used in our day-to-day -day LAN devices why why do we use Ethernet as a technology to communicate over LAN this uh, Ethernet is used because it's the cheapest medium available and it provides many high bandwidth requirements uh, because LAN in LAN the bandwidth requirements are very high so if you want to transfer a data of more than 100 Mbps per second it can be transferable in LAN and these requirements are fulfilled by Ethernet second equipments which are used in LAN also very cheap as compared to other uh, equipments in van or man so this is one of the fundamental reasons that ethernet is used in LAN now coming across the second uh, type of uh, network it's basically a metropolitan area network is a metropolitan area network it's a, it's a network which is developed in and around cities as we have seen previously in LAN when the computers or devices are connected in a small area or a room which we call it in uh, LAN similarly when two or more computers or network devices which are connected to each other at different location but in the same metropolitan area network then we call it as a MAN for example suppose uh, HDFC bank has an office in Andheri and it also has an office in Bombay uh, uh, in Borivri so basically they are connected uh, in a MAN now the question arises that who is the only owner of the man so the owner of the man is basically the isp why because to communicate over the man we need to use we need to buy these lines from the isp because there is no single wire which will be uh, con uh, connecting from uh, borivali to andheri since it's a huge distance uh, a large distance so isp has already dug around uh, wires uh, in this area so we have to pay to the ISP uh, to take this service now what are the limitations of this the limitations is that that we can't we can't use 
uh, as bandwidth which are used uh, in LAN uh, as we are using in LAN. So in MAN the bandwidth is uh, restricted. So in MAN the bandwidth is not as large as uh, in uh, in LAN because we are paying uh, or to the service provider for that. Now the third uh, is WAN. Now what is WAN? We, we have come across this. Basically, it's a network that connects two or more local area networks over a potentially large geographic distance. What does that mean? Basically, as we have uh, heard in from LAN and MAN, basically the definition, the area widens over here. So basically, two computers or networks or networking devices when are connected to each other, but in different continents or in different countries, they are said to be connected by WAN. Have you heard about internet? Internet as we know it today is essentially the ultimate WAN spanning the entire globe. So the communication between networks or the LAN networks in different regions or different continent is called networking. So internet, internet by far today is the biggest wide area network which we are having today. Now the question arises who is the owner of the internet? Basically there are no owner of the internet because it because it is situated situated in different regions so in india the internet is con uh, is provided from different service providers like tata or vodafone or bharti uh, in us it will be provided uh, by at&t sprint or in europe it will be provided by uh, british telecom or alcatel uh, etc etc so basically these service providers come across and they provide a connectivity to different regions which we call it as internet and basically it's a wide area network so the limitations of wide area network would be the bandwidth why because over here the data transfer will be very 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 costly as compared to LAN as well as MAN why because over here the distance involved is between two continents so data transfer between two continents will be very costly. Hence, we need to pay much more uh, in terms of uh, data transfer or a point-to-point -point line between two regions. Now coming to the fourth type of uh, network is the VPN network. What is a VPN? It's a virtual private network. Now this method has become popular in recent years. Why? Because as we use more and more internet the risk of the viruses or malware, com malware coming into our system is also high. So it allows the people to log into a network remotely and access its resources. But it also encrypts the connection so that the ha hacker can't eavesdrop uh, uh, on your connection. If a company sets you up a v v with a VPN, you can access your corporate intranet or file servers or email from a home or a coffee shop just as you were using it in office. Why do you require VPN? Why? Because when I am using a public network in a Starbucks cafe, so basically the, this uh, network is used by other people also. So, so when I am using my office network, I am doing something very confidential or very private, uh, which is uh, work which is very private to my organizations. So to protect my data, this technology helps us to encrypt the data when we are communicating uh, with the office. So whenever I log in to a VPN to my office with help. So whenever uh, I log uh, into the office with the help of VPN, whatever the communication which is taking place between me and my office sitting in the Starbucks cafe is encrypted. So that even if somebody is hacking my uh, traffic, he won't be able to uh, see what I'm uh, communicating. So this makes VPN a very popular way to support the remote workers, especially in field where privacy is paramount.